Hey all, this program is rated M for Mature, presenting Master and Apprentice Photography. Cold open. Let's go. How's it going, Marlon? Not too bad. You? Doing good. It feels so weird asking people how they're doing now, because... Yeah, it's basically like, hey, what are you doing at your house that you've been stuck in for a while? Yeah, exactly. I know nothing's changed, but yeah. But then again, my mood goes up and down so quick that the answer is probably different, but what I'm actually doing is the same. Yeah, and it's probably a lot different for me than you, because like me, I work in IT, so I couldn't be in front of a computer for a long time. You're right. a photographer, like you need to be getting out and taking pictures to like stimulate your mind and stuff, I'm sure, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, a lot of my work is also sitting in front of a computer for many hours, but uh, I do... I didn't realize how much I actually miss the social aspect of, of taking photos. And really, um, I think after like a busy wedding season, I'm always need to take that time to decompress where I'm like, I hate photography. I hate people. I hate society. <laughs> I hate capitalism. <laughs> okay. And then my, uh, you know, and then because I make most of my salary doing weddings and then like there's this lull in the winter because I'm in Canada where no one really wants to get married in minus 40 degree weather. Ouch. Yeah, and I don't need to convert that into uh, degrees freedom. <laughs> I guess it's the same in degrees communist. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then my money starts running out, and I'm like, no. <laughs> I was like, I love business. Free market, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find someone to take a picture of now. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously there's a huge social component to photography. It's not just pointing your camera at things. It's It's, you know understanding people observing them so i don't have that right now uh, okay but uh i like i, I think you saw on uh, on twitter and on my instagram i a few uh montreal photographers started this uh you know doing a creative selfie challenge and it took all my energy to actually pick myself up and charge my batteries and think of think of something to do but once i did it it's like i actually felt really great just creating something for myself not for a client not you know like the only person i had to make happy was myself mm -hmm. and uh I actually like kind of was, was pretty uplifting so that is good yeah so let's get right into the questions sure okay so what do you do leading up to a photo shoot do you just like show up and start shooting or do you like go and plan and prep hours or days beforehand that's right that's interesting so um i'm one of those people that every before every school year i would have my agenda and i would say okay i'm gonna write my agenda every day exactly what i need to do like take proper notes, things like that. And then like mm -hmm. three weeks into the school year, there's no more agenda. <laughs> there's no more writing. <laughs> there's no more note taking. So after after every wedding, I'm like, hey, I'm going to start charging my batteries now, clearing my cards, have everything lined up. And so instead of doing that three days before, I now do that a day before, which I, which is good enough for me. I'm actually, I'm actually proud of myself, but I, sh I should be doing it a few days before. Um Getting my equipment uh, ready is, is, you know, it's not it's not too complicated. We spoke before that I, I tend to travel light anyways, mm -hmm. you know, but in terms of uh, like, yes, I should be wiping down my lenses, but I kind of like I have um, I have Zeiss lens wipes in my uh, in my bag at all time. So, yeah, I, I should be doing that in the morning and then going going to the shoot. But I end up just, you know, doing that as I'm there. It's not a it's not a big deal. Usually. When I show up to a wedding, I, I tend to always, I'm always on time or early. I'm usually quite early, and okay. uh, I like to I like to be at a shoot early, and that's when I kind of decompress and uh, you know and just gather my bearings, especially for a wedding. So if you show up half an hour earlier, it's not like you rush into an event that's happening and you're you have to be creatively on. Like I do like a little warm up. So especially, um, you know, if the bride is getting ready and she's just sitting there getting her makeup done, her makeup's not even on yet and her hair might be like in curlers or something, but I'll start like photographing a dress, just hanging up somewhere. And sometimes I don't even use the first a hundred photos at all, but it's just to kind of warm my brain up to seeing light and, you know, and uh, okay. getting creative and things like that. I do, I do like to look up inspiration just to have it fresh. You know, some of my favorite photographers I'll look up on Instagram but uh, I hate copying other people's things. And I always tend to, even even when it's in my own mind of something I want to do, I always end up changing it somehow. Like I, 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 I like loose plans. I don't like coming into a shoot going, I'm absolutely going to do this and it has to be perfect to a T. You have a framework that you're trying to work around basically. Exactly. Okay. So like, do you 
treat a uh, a venue differently if you've been there before or do you treat everything like it's brand new i am i don't want to say like i'm better that's that's an improper turn but um i i'm able to see more creatively when it's when it's something a new place or a new location okay um one of the difficulties i have in my city in montreal is that it's a it's a rather small city so i tend to always be shooting at the same venues if it's a big wedding, there's only a handful of venues that, that can hold, you know, 300 to 500 people. And you probably shot them all multiple times at this point. Like the back of my hand. I know exactly what spot. Oh, you want to create a family portrait? We can go here, here, here. Oh, if bridal party, we can go here, 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 here. And I don't like doing the same poses or same compositions, but sometimes it's you're in the same location. It's a wall. What, you know, what can you do? And I'm always trying to change it up. But um, so it gets difficult because I don't like putting myself in a box like feel like i'm trapped and it's a it's actually one of the interesting things about being a wedding photographer and something i have to i have to consciously think about a lot like what am what am i trying to accomplish am i trying to make myself happy am i trying to make the couple happy it's and every wedding shoot is always a balance of that and i want to do both i want to take some photos that i'm very proud of they might be a bit more abstract but i still want to want that creative outlet you want to flex your creative muscles Exactly. And then, you know, sometimes it is just, you know, like a low aperture bouquet background photo of, you know, the groom and his best friend, which is not something I'm going to post and say, look what a great photographer I am. But maybe <laughs> that will be one of the most important photos for this person and, and, and his friend, you know, maybe we'll mm-hmm. keep that photo and print it and look at it for 50 years. So it's, you know, it's, it's things where I'm like, oh, you know, did I really flex my creative muscles today? But in the end, I was still there to, you know, be conscientious of the moments that the, the couples would want and things like that. And it's something I I need to I need to tell myself that constantly because there's sometimes where, you know, I have all the ideas. I want to be creative. I wish I did this. I wish I tried this pose. I wish I had enough time to, to play around. And then, you know, I delivered the photos. And the couple goes, wow, we love every single one of them. Thank you so much for capturing all these moments, you know. Mm-hmm. so it's 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 funny it's one of these things that like what how do i define success in a you know you know in a photo shoot or a wedding shoot okay so well you take you know upwards of like ten, fifteen thousand photos so you're gonna have some yeah. that you love there's gonna be some that the groom and the bride will love right so you got to find the balance there and that's actually yeah that's pretty pretty interesting like having to look at it from different points of views like this one is really nice. This one makes me happy, but I don't think it's going to fit what they were looking for or something like that. That's right. That's I mean, a, a weird, they'll still uh, get those. They'll still to get, take. Exactly. Um, they'll still get those photos. That if I'm proud of it, it's, it's there. I want to show off my creativity, whether people don't understand. I, th- I did a photo shoot of, um, it was a couple, they were ice skating and I took this wide angle photo and it's just their feet right on top. Like you couldn't even see that it was just cropped at the knees and it was just their two pairs of skates together. You know, the man's black hockey skates and the ladies uh, figure skating uh, skates, which are white. And it was just this kind of like um, lots of like uh, it, it was a minimalist photo with lots of negative space. So it was just this big empty like patch of ice with just two little feet. And I put it right in the middle, which is, you know, breaking a composition rule but it's it's what you use when you want a lot of impact so i broke the rule of thirds because i wanted you know the subject right in the middle for a mm-hmm. bit more more impact and like i loved it i thought it was like whoa it's, it's telling a story you don't even need the couple's faces or bodies in the photo to show that sense of you know connection and uh it's actually that's that's on my instagram but the couple was like oh is this a mistake <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is like a photo like that would be like hanging on the wall at some like art gallery or something like that. Whereas right. like the the actual picture that the couple loved would like never, you know, never see the light of day basically in any kind of art gallery or anything. Exactly. So that exactly. And wow. all my couples are different. So some of them really appreciate the the artistic stuff and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and some of them, some of them don't. So it's, you know, not everyone's going to love every, you know, little thing I try, but it's also as a photographer, I want to make my I want to make my couples happy. Obviously, I want to, you know, I, it's, it's my identity. So I, I want them yeah. to enjoy the photos I give them. Yeah, I would think, though, as like uh, somebody who's hiring you to take their picture um, in their mind, it's all about them. They're like, oh, that's nice and creative and all, but we want us. 
<laughs> that's right. probably uh well that that's why i would try to find that balance of both and i tell mm-hmm. everyone like I'm, I'm gonna get you your you know your head and shoulders like frame portrait which might not be creatively amazing but i know that in 50 years if someone asks oh we need a portrait of you guys from your wedding we're putting together a family album they don't want to say like oh well here's this creative shot it's in black and white we're against a brick wall we're 10 feet apart you know and we're looking off to either side which could, which could, you know, is like an artsy photo and it looks cool on, uh, you know, online a week after your wedding. But mm-hmm. I, I am conscientious that, you know, you still want to take like those, you know, traditional photos. I don't want to fall in the trap where I'm only doing traditional photos or only doing like these super abstract artsy photos. And I find finding that balance is what makes my couples the happiest. Um, I took I took one photo that I really love um, last uh, last fall and it was, you know, by this building we went to where there's lots of um there's lots of shapes painted on the side of a building lots of different colors and uh you know like compose this triangle right in the middle of the frame equidistant everywhere you know and the couple on either side the groom in the foreground out of focus and the bride behind looking straight at the camera and uh like i loved how it turned out the bride loved how it turned out the, you know and the groom goes well i don't understand i just want i just wanted photos of us you know together Mm-hmm. And there was tons of photos of them together. So this made the bride happy, not the groom happy. And uh, obviously, I always want to make everyone happy. But sometimes, you know, if I have 30 couples a year, which is 60 different people, you know, there's always going to be, there's always going to be, you know, people that, that get what I'm doing and people that don't. I'd be more yeah. upset if someone, <laughs> you know, if I if I delivered over a thousand wedding photos and <laughs> they didn't like a single one, there'd be a big problem. <laughs> but... <laughs> Time to go back to that uh, that surgery idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. So yeah, I never thought of like if one person really likes it and one person doesn't like it. Like y- you basically need both of them on board. So you're right. Exactly. And well, what's what's probably the most like fascinating for me right now thinking about the, all this is like you don't know ahead of time what their tastes are really. Like you're taking photos and then you have to figure it out after the photos have already been taken. Which that's uh, it's true, but obviously. If they if they're hiring me and spending a lot of money for me to be at their wedding, they know I'm I'm quite consistent in my style. Yeah. So they've seen my work by this point. We've I, I'm I have to meet my couples beforehand. I won't just show up at your wedding. I want to make sure we're all on the same page. I have had I have had people that have told me like, oh well, we we do really like this the traditional style a bit more, which is fine. I'll take their money. And I've had couples that really, really want me to. Like, <laughs> like, Sorry, that took a second for it to, to register <laughs> for me. That's okay. I'll take their money. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's couples that really want me to flex my artistic side, which I'm more than happy, you know, to go crazy with. Fish so, eye lens on everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, the <laughs> fish eye. I t- I, well, I used my fish eye for, uh, for one of my, uh, for one of my cel- uh, self-portrait challenge photos. But uh, it was the one where it was all black with just like light on my eyes, so you don't really see the fish eye effect. Oh, okay. I just needed a lens that that I could hold like an inch away from my face and still be in focus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, to go back to the the original question, uh, so you said that you meet your couples ahead of time. Um, so what kind of actual like discussions do you have with people prior to the uh, the photo shoot? You know, just talk about, you know, what are they expecting of their wedding photos? If they can imagine looking at their wedding album right now, and this is, you know, a few months before they're married, you know, what do they, like, what can they envision that they they like? You know, do they want to see fun party photos? Do they really want portraits of themselves? Is it, you know, really want these romantic ceremony photos? Are you looking for more of like a fun, cool vibe? So I can really sense if it's a good connection between us or not. Mm -hmm. I also just talk to them about, you know, who they are you know, what they do for work, etc., and just get them talking, and, you know, make sure they're, make sure our personalities mesh. Okay. Does, is that really a important factor of, you know, you're photographing them, like you're not really, you know, the personality shouldn't really play a big role, would it? Interesting question. It's the biggest factor for me. Oh, okay. Um, you and I talk a lot, mm-hmm. you know, and especially through the years. Um, I'm not everyone's cup of tea, and that's understandable. I'm around you and your family all day. I don't have a filter. Like, <laughs> okay, I, don't, I see what you're going at now. I don't. I don't want to wreck. <laughs> I don't want to be responsible for ruining someone's day, especially their most important day. Exactly. Like, uh, not that. Not that I'm there, like swearing and 
you know, talking to like the bride's grandmother going, you know, girth or length? What do you think? <laughs> but you're also not in the background, like yeah. invisible yeah. to everyone. Yeah. You're in, going involved. Yeah. Exactly. I'm not, you know, it's, I'm, I'm not like, I'm an at, listen, I, I am an asshole, but I'm not the kind of person that, that wants to make someone's event about me or like make a, makes a photo shoot about me, but I'm mm-hmm. still myself. So, you know, and, uh, I tend to be, I'm really good at following up with people and uh, staying friends with people. So like many of my couples I'm still friends with, I still talk, speak to, it's, you know, been, you know, five years, 10 years, a year after their wedding. And we, we you know, we still talk a lot on social media and whatnot. And those are the people I, I really tend to get along with. Like I'm, I'm happy to be at their wedding. I'm happy to see them get married. I, I really want to preserve these memories for them. I take it very personally. I understand okay. that we have one day, you know, they have one day to, to capture all this and they're entrusting me to do it. So it, it, it is super personal to me. It's not a business. If, if I was more interested in being a businessman, I, I wouldn't be a photographer. So it, you know, my company name is my name. It's not, it's not like Precious Meadows Photography. It's, you know, my name. So, so it is super personal to me. And uh, so I'm not just selling my work. I have to sell myself too. And I always tell my couples, there are lots of photographers and you might like their photos and they, you know, you might like their work just as much. Do you also want to spend an entire day with them? That is a good point. Yeah. You know? when, I, when I got married, had I sat down with my wedding photographer and had these kind of discussions that you're talking about. I think that uh, we went a different route with our photographer. Oh, so there you go. You've had, you've had a first hand experience. And it did not occur to me. It was just a clash of personalities. Yeah. So it, like, it, I just thought that they were just bad at their job. Which they <laughs> might have been, but yeah, well, they, they, they could have been. And it's hard. It's hard to explain, especially when you're when you're doing portraiture or weddings or anything involving people. Um, I've had people saying, well, I have a hard time getting clients. Look at my portfolio. What's wrong? And I tell them, yeah, your portfolio might be great. But someone else also has a great portfolio. And someone might say like, oh, I'd rather be on set with them all day than, you know, yeah, especially if person. it's like a. 10 plus hour event exactly okay so um going back to what we were talking about earlier with uh basically memorable pictures that you've had that were flexing your creative muscle and stuff like that right um what's the most memorable picture you've ever taken that you can think of and like why does it stand out in your mind okay so when you when you when i read that first thing that pops in mind (laughs) yeah i have an answer don't worry (laughs) okay when i first read this question there were so many images i can think of obviously i've taken millions in my you know throughout my career not millions of memorable ones but just millions of photos and i've won awards for a few so i've i have lots of creative photos that i'm proud of but the one that sticks out the most is was from my first first wedding that i ever photographed i was doing it for free that was the one where my friend at the time said oh you've never photographed a wedding well come along point your camera at stuff have some fun and uh you know see if you like it and that was my addition for my first professional wow um photography job and i captured a moment it was uh it was a man and his daughter and they were standing by a window the background was just a blank gray wall with window coming in and he was blowing bubbles and his daughter was just like under him looking up and jumping and trying to grab them and uh i just captured this you know perfect serene moment it was cute it was amazing like i love the composition and it was the first time where, oh, like I, I wasn't just, I wasn't just pointing my camera at a scene and, and capturing it. Like I, I composed it and I waited and I, I, you know, I, it was more like I didn't just take a photo. I made a photo and I kind of understood wow. what that, what that meant. It's a common saying, but you know, I, I really kind of felt that like, oh, I, I deliberately captured this moment in this mm-hmm. way to, you know, to make something artsy instead of just, you know, being like, oh, here's, you know, Jim and his daughter, click, click, click. So that that stands out because that was you know when uh, when my friend at the time we were reviewing my images he he said wow like that was a great one and it was the first time like you know I felt super proud of myself and everything and I felt oh maybe you know like oh I can do this and uh, I don't think I could re- recreate it again because that's the funny thing about photography you need the moment to be there to capture it and you need to see it also you can't just I mean obviously when you're doing a a studio shoot you can you can you can pose and adjust the lights and get everything perfect right exactly but which is still up to the model and you know and everyone else involved in the shoot could they also recreate it the exact same way again mm-hmm. you know depending on what you're doing 
not always, but, you know, especially when you're doing like a documentary photography, like I might be walking around New York City trying to capture cool stuff. And if, you know, obviously you can always find like, uh, that's the beautiful thing about the world. There's always a moment to capture, mm -hmm. whether it's a huge moment or you're focusing in on something. There's always some a new way to see something and a new way to uh, something, you know, new to capture. But sometimes, you know, just nothing, nothing is happening. And then there's that one person that maybe takes one photo that one day and it's just amazingly, you know, mind blowing. So, you know, it's sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you have to create it. The most important part about being a professional is just being consistent. But uh, the fun thing about photography as a hobby when you're being creative is, you know, those rules really don't matter. Yeah. And like you were saying, and I guess I think it was the first episode where you said that your deliver tip was take a lot of photos because you got to catch the moment. You're not trying right. to catch the, the scene. You're trying to catch the moment that the scene has produced or whatever, I guess. Exactly. Like in the fall, I took pictures of my uh, my niece and nephew and I had them just throw leaves in the air. But I mean, you know, I only spent five minutes doing it, but maybe I took 200 photos of them just because I wanted that perfect as soon as the mm -hmm. leaves fall and you can still see them like around my, my camp, you know, in the air, but I still want like a, a little gap with their faces through it. Yeah. And that's, that's not something you can script or prepare for. It's exactly. something that happened. Right. So the script was throw leaves in the air and I'll try to do my best. <laughs> and we got it. <laughs> but in terms of, you know, how, you know, how far apart are they when they throw it? Like, are their expressions going to match? You know, things like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, you control what you can. And, you know, you don't sweat what you can't control. I like that you said, like, you'll do your best. Like, whenever <laughs> you go on a photo shoot, that's that's all you can do is do your best. You're not like a, it's not an on or off type thing. It's like, I'll do my best. I'll get close as I can to what you're looking for. Yeah. But, like, you can't pull the, the image they have out of their mind, put yeah, it on camera. It's always good to manage people's expectations. <laughs> and uh, And it's always good to even, like, prepare them that, like, if you can put it in their mind that, Oh, you know, this is difficult. I don't even think we can do this. And then you, you pull it off. They think you're better if you're, if you're just like, yeah, fuck yeah, we're going to do it. That's what I, that's what I realized actually with dating too. I, I would just tell everyone like, I'm, uh, I'm like terrible at sex. And then all I had to do was just like be adequate. <laughs> and the difference in expectation is what makes it mind blowing. So I really figured out the secret there. Of both dating and photography. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Well, just life in general. <laughs> you would have made a horrible doctor by the way <laughs> i was no i mean amazing. i'm just gonna bring it to you okay. guys now okay. we're probably not gonna be able to save the leg yeah probably not sorry can't no. can't do anything but imagine about that leg. imagine you say that to someone and then they wake up and like both their legs are there they're gonna think <laughs> you're a miracle worker they're gonna go and rate I, my md and be like I, I think they would go the get a second opinion and then the other doctor would be like of course we could save the leg what is he talking about <laughs> <laughs> you have a cold <laughs> just take these hulls uh wow okay so um <laughs> got a little off topic there yeah uh, so actually back to the whole uh discussion of catching the moment versus scripted do you think that your clients could actually t like well not i shouldn't say your clients like just people in general do you think they would be able to tell whether a photograph is scripted and staged or if it's like a an illegitimate capturing the moment type thing um i think i think most people are are able to tell there's obviously a huge difference between someone who's not a professional model like looking at a camera or laughing okay and uh you know obviously when it's a portrait you can tell but i like to set up a portrait kind of get a baseline okay look at me you know say a little joke get them happy and then you know there's certain things you can say to prod people to react if you want them both to laugh, you know, you get them to laugh, you know, things just like, okay, well, you know, the first time you saw Sarah on your first date, like what was going through your mind? And, you know, they'll talk about it and you just wait for that moment where, you know, like, oh, did something embarrassing happen on the first date? And then they laugh and you go, click, 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 click. And like you capture that, gen you know, that, that genuine moment. Whereas like maybe the portrait is nice, but all that picture is saying is like, this is what these two people look like on this day. And here they are, they're together and they're looking at the camera, they're wearing fancy outfits. Whereas like, oh, here's, here's them reminiscing about their first date. And he captured like that genuine, you know, um, emotion. And it's not just that it can be like, oh, you know, um, like Brad, I want you to whisper in Sarah's ear a moment that you were just like completely proud of her, you know, which might be a more, uh, serious 
tense moment, but, you know, maybe he closes his eyes and, you know, hugs her tight. And like, that's also a nice, you know, moment to share. So whether that's, you know, whether you're, you're saying like, it's not the same thing as like a, a moment during the party where, you know, someone's, you know, starts doing the limbo, you know, like, uh, using, using the groomsmen's ties. (laughs) <laughs> you know, whereas like that's like oh, obviously it's not a scripted moment, but like you know, for these portraits, it's not a scripted moment either. But it's you know, you're 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 creating these, I guess, these micro moments. You're you're prompting the moment exactly. Yeah, it's not this. It's not the same as saying cheese. It's like hey, yeah, exactly. Do this, and then I will catch the the result yeah. of whatever happens afterwards. Yeah, videographers are really bad at this because especially the ones I work with, it's a lot of <laughs> shots fired. It's a lot of. Pretend like you love each other. Okay, guys, pretend like you love each other. All right, just guys. Okay, I want you to hold hands. Pretend like you love each other. Huh? 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 And like nothing <laughs> makes me nothing makes me more upset than than. Okay, just kiss. Now kiss. Okay, I want you to look at each other. Now kiss. Look at each other. Now kiss. So that's that's the the scripted stuff that you don't want to deal with. You're like, right. we want to catch them actually kissing and them actually, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you force two people to kiss, it's a lot different than like if they. Do right. it, like on the dance floor or something. Don't forget, I'm still taking lots of pictures of people kissing. I'm just not trying to say like, okay, now kiss. <laughs> yeah. You know? I mean, you have a lot of control over a lot of things, but you're trying not to control like what they do and their actions and stuff like that. You're right. trying to catch them doing stuff in the moment. And there, there's people in the industry who, you know, and everyone has their own style, but it's, you know, they're cookie cutter. That's what they do. They, they wake up the day of the wedding, they go and they go, okay, I know what I'm going to do. I always do the shot where they hold hands and I ask them to walk five feet and then turn towards each other and then stop then grab her and then kiss. And it's, you know, I always put it in every video, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, and I would take this picture and it's always there. You know, I always do the, like, uh, this isn't me telling you what I'm doing. This is me. Yeah, yeah. This is paraphrasing what other people do. Le- like yeah. uh, lesser people. <laughs> the people without the creativity, the people that are. Exactly. Just- Strictly yeah. like, okay, this is a business. This isn't a, a exactly. this isn't a fun thing. You know what? And there are there are couples who don't they don't even care they don't care if they have artsy photos or not. They just say, hey, you know what? We're having this. Uh, we're having a wedding. We're paying a lot of money. You know, we have one day in our lives. I just want some pictures of you know, just to remember it. You know, of just us together. We just want to remember the day. Like it doesn't have to be like us in a silhouette under the tree. And there's some people that you know that have good taste, and there's something for everyone. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a place for those the cookie cutter photographers, but it's usually school photos or something like that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so in Canada, we don't have like senior photos, how, okay. how they do in the States. Like your last year of high school, everyone tends to have this creative photo shoot mm-hmm. with their with their guitar on a train track is what I see a lot online. <laughs> So, uh, so what you guys have anything similar to that or no we just like you wear your cap and gown and the school photographer like goes hey smile freckle face and you know uh, okay but uh, we were in the mall in the states and my wife was like senior photos like he's like she's like isn't that just regular portraiture why is why is someone advertised like they specialize in photographing old people and i was just <laughs> it was really funny <laughs> Because in Canada, we don't do freshman, sophomore, senior. It's just what grade you're in. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure that the cookie cutter photographers make killing off of that. Yeah. Because all they and... do is sit down, snap, next, sit down, snap. Next. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm <laughs> I'm friends with someone that does a lot of school photos. I've had I've had people call me like, oh, would you do our school photos? Can you do something creative? And I said, There's... I love working one-on-one with people doing creative portrait. But even that process of just, you know, what are you looking for, et cetera, what you want to do can take mm-hmm. hours. Then you have to make the portrait. Then you have to edit it, you know, and be creative and things like that. I don't think I could do that for, you know, 2,000 people in the school. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, they need someone who's good at, you know, just being super consistent. Click, 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 click. Send you. Yeah, that's a, that's a process you streamline. <laughs> exactly. And I'm I'm not a streamline type person. Yeah. And, uh, you yeah. know, and, and obviously, like for a school photo, that's that's. You know, that's what you need to do. So then that's great. And that is an excellent example of scripted too. It's like, okay, put your feet on the X, turn this way, look look towards yeah. this dot. Okay, snap. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Just being organized enough is hard. <laughs> yeah. It, it, imagine you're photographing 2,000 people and then, you know, how many pictures do you take of each? Yeah. You'd probably take, you know, 50 of each. Yeah, exactly. All sudden, yeah, all of a sudden it's just an astronomical amount of photos to go through. Yeah, exactly. And I'm the type of person that if uh, 
you know, if you're taking pictures of 2,000 people in a school, like I, I never liked any of my school photos. But if I if I was a photographer and someone's like, oh, I don't like my school photo, I, I'd go home and be like, what's wrong with me? Am I not good enough? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, have, I have too much of an artist's soul to, uh, to care. But I mean, these people that do school photos, they make a lot of money. Oh and yeah! It's, uh, if you're able to do that, especially you have lots of school, like uh, lots of contracts with with different schools. Some of the, and that's that's what they do all year. They just go to different schools. They do it. That's all their money for the year. Um, it's a huge project. You have to be very organized to do that. You can't lose people's photos. You need to, you know, especially all the processing, mm-hmm. or or controlling the outsourcing of the processing because uh, many people do that. But I'm the type of person where I just need to, you know, every once in a while just hide like like select everything on my desktop and throw it into one folder called like desktop two. <laughs> okay. As I'm, as I'm sitting at my desktop, like looking at folders, desktop, like one through 16. Wow. Yeah. Like I'll get back to these and I'll organize them later. Yeah. I'm always like organizing all my files as a project for when I'm done editing. I'm never done. editing. <laughs> That's the secret. Never get, yeah, never finish. Yeah, you never have yeah, to clean exactly. up. <laughs> i've been cooking dinner for three weeks now never gonna do those dishes <laughs> well so yeah school photographer is like that's that's what i think of when i think of like an assembly line photography type thing it's like okay every little piece has already been decided i just have to go through the motions and then at the end i have pictures to deliver right wow i don't know how we got on school photography from uh <laughs> what is your <laughs> most memorable photo but uh yeah i think i told you earlier that we're gonna have to cut this one a little short so uh, if you want to go ahead and give your deliberate tip for this episode. Okay. I should really start thinking about these things before. No, I like, <laughs> the, I like the spontaneity. Yeah. It's funny because I thought about the uh, memorable picture, but it was like the tip. All right. So let's... Uh... <laughs> the memorable picture was supposed to be the off the top of your head, not the, yeah. hey, I want to think about this. Perfect. Wow. Um, so <laughs> it was. It, I also have to remember the other tip so I don't... <laughs> I don't I'll let you know myself. if you repeat. Perfect. So this tip would be um, composition. Uh, don't just point the middle of your camera at something when you're starting out. Try putting it, your subject slightly off center. And that's the rule of thirds. You want to imagine your 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 camera is split into, you know, yeah, three into sections. thirds. Yeah, three sections, uh, vertical and horizontal. And you kind of stick things in the corner. Sometimes, let's say you have someone looking to the side. And if you give them a big, bit extra space on the side, you're kind of opening up the image, like where are they looking towards and you're giving some space to, to add some context and that uh, that can make or break a picture. So like uh, when you're first starting out and you're if you're starting portraits or even if it's just a, a still life, you know, you can try straight down the pipe, right down, right in the middle and then try on either side. And then when you're looking at your images after, you know, try to compare what you like and dislike about something. Okay. That's a, a very creative, uh, artistic tip to give. Mm-hmm. I like it. Anything else? Uh, I think that's it. Cold okay. ending. Bye. Cold ending. Thanks for listening. Wait, can I say cold ending and then say thanks for listening? <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> that's, that's not how a cold ending works, yeah. is it? I don't think we're I don't think we're popular enough to get uh, to get like angry emails about that stuff yet. I know. I I can't <laughs> wait until we get that popular. In episode three, you said cold ending, and then you said thanks for listening. So technically, it wasn't a cold ending because the podcast continued. Thanks for listening to our podcast. I hope you learned something or got some good laughs out of it. Check us out at mandapod.com. M-A-N-D-A-P-O-D.com. Thanks again.